I'm ostensibly going to talk about this book that uh, we published just three months ago, uh, which is trying to solve the global workforce crisis. I started to read and basically started to think about why it was that people weren't talking about this as much as they should do. It wasn't the world's best kept secret, but it seemed to me that actually now it's the most pressing issue facing global healthcare. The richest, most powerful country in the world that spends twice the OECD average on its health system, that's the United States of America, is already approaching 1 million nurses short and 120,000 doctors short by 2030. In India, where we spend, uh, I spend a lot of my time helping Prime Minister Modi now, and as you probably know, Modi's just been re-elected for his second term. One of his principal promises was to provide uh, health care for 550 million human beings. Is he mad or is he ambitious? Because he's launching it against a backdrop of 3.9 million clinical vacancies. Now, I think he's ambitious for his country and for his people. Quite simply put, we face a future where there is too much work and too few workers. Most of the literature that we read uh, talk more about the problem than the solution. But at the moment, for those of you that don't know, the World Health Organization estimates we need 18 million more health workers by 2030, which roughly equates to a shortfall in the total global capacity to care of 20%. Do I think the world needs more healthcare workers? Absolutely. Do I think we need 18 million more health workers? Then I'm not so sure about that. This preface for the book basically calls for more urgency because I believe there are solutions. But it also says it calls for more honesty, more honesty between our governments and our people. And dare I say it, more honesty about immigration and migration. How often do you see politicians that say they love healthcare staff but fail to provide for an adequate supply of them? Our need for labour and technology, new ways of working, new business models, new models of care has never been greater. So the first thing to realise is that workforce problem is what's called a wicked problem which requires complex adaptive solutions. And there are only two ways to, co to conquer or try to conquer complex adaptive solutions. The first is to give the work to the people, and the second is to use and mobilise every single asset that you have at your disposal in a community. We need to refashion, reframe completely workforce into one of the debates about national productivity, national health and national wealth. Because if you accept the argument that there won't be enough human beings to do all the work that's required, we have to become more productive. For too long, entrepreneurial governments have not been entrepreneurial. The status quo is that we restrict and restrain the supply of health workers at just the time when we need 18 million more. I genuinely don't believe any doctor, nurse or allied health professional ever needs to be made compulsorily redundant in healthcare. We know there are five models of care, including moving into the cloud for consultations, including integrated care, that if managed at scale, produce productivity benefits of between 16 and 21%. We know patients can become more active partners in their care. And we also know that communities can be deployed as carers. 79% of doctors and 76% of nurses feel they're overtrained for the work that they do. The BMA and the RCN say 18 to 20% of tasks can be done by other people. Imagine getting people playing at the top of their game and then supporting then a new raft of people coming into health and having a career supported by technology and professionals playing at the top of the uh, their game. The digital dividend, 36% uh, of all tasks are estimated now in healthcare could be moved to robotics or cognitive augmentation by 2030. If change is a human contact sport, you best contact human beings. And how can you care for patients if you're not caring for the carers? So actually, some of these things that I've outlined require investment, but some require something much more important than money. They require commitment. We know already that a shortage of staff affects individuals, families, communities, and ultimately nations. And I genuinely believe, through the 10 solutions I've seen working at scale, that if we really want to make this the number one priority, people. First, people, last. So in conclusion, 
We are hurtling towards a global workforce crisis. We are not alone in this country, but I actually think we are uniquely placed to make a better fist of this in terms of the solutions than many other countries around the world. And I thank you for your attention and look forward to your questions and comments. Thank you very much indeed.